Okay, this will be an, a survey of First Samuel. Okay, at First Samuel, you'll have six books in a row that deals with kings and kingdoms. Sometimes they're called First, Second Kings, Third, Fourth Kings, First and Second Chronicles. But uh, you have those six books, and that reveals in the Old Testament how God deals with nations. Okay, governmental ideas are often revealed in the Old Testament, specifically Deuteronomy, which was very, very instrumental as a guide to the uh, founding fathers of this country, contrary to what historians try to uh, hide that historical truth. So I want to give you an overview of First Samuel. Different viewpoints of the book. I'm going to give you historically, practically, and doctrinally. Historically, uh, 1 Samuel reveals a progressive path from a commonwealth to a monarch. Okay, progressive. What I mean by that is evil, a progressive, where Democrats often refer to themselves as progressive. Oh, we're progress. Right. Progress down. It, it goes from a commonwealth Israel went from a commonwealth to a monarchy. A commonwealth protects the inalienable rights of the man on the land, where self-government is the highest ideal of governing as an individual, where in this country from July 4th, 1776, until the formation of the national constitution or either state constitutions, self-government was the highest ideal of the people at that time, but you have to have people of character to do that. Okay, where the big government reveals little men, Proverbs 28, verse 2. Okay, in this commonwealth, then a, when you follow that through, you have the book of Judges where judicial decrees placed power in the hands of a select few. Now, technically, a judicial decree, uh, people often think that the Supreme Court or judges are ruling this country, and really that's not true. Uh, they write their opinions about a certain case. And really, technically, really, the only one needs to be concerned with their opinion will be the defendant and the plaintiff. And the deception is a lot of people tend to believe that opinion is a judicial decree or law. It is not. It's just an opinion. And it really don't mean anything. But people give it meaning. And so then uh, Israel went from that to judges to a monarchy. And a monarchy, monarchy places the power in one. Now, if that one is good, like Christ Jesus is, then peace and prosperity will result. Proverbs 28, verse 2, For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a man of knowledge and understanding the state shall be prolonged. Now, if that power in one and that one is evil or self-promoting, then tyranny will ensue. Now, why did these people in 1 Samuel uh, desire to have a king. Now, the amazing thing is God warned them about that in Deuteronomy chapter 17. He said, you're going to want a king someday. You shouldn't, but you're going to want one. In, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, it shows why they wanted a king. Now, Samuel protested and that's the exact word that's used in the Bible. And he protested why they shouldn't desire a king. And the Lord told them, and this shows that it's not a, an absolute theocracy because the Lord gave in to the will of the people. But before he gave in, he had Samuel warn them. 1 Samuel 8 verse 9. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly, unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Now, when you read down through there, he's going to say the king's going to take your kids. He's going to put them in your army and he's going to charge you ten a tenth. 
He's going to take a tenth in taxes. Wouldn't you like to have just a tenth? But that was just the start. But why did the people claim to want this king? 1 Samuel 8, 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. That... We also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Fight our battles. They were willing to give up their liberties for a false security. That's what's happened to America this past year, where uh, many, many people, the sheep in America, have dutifully put on their mask, given up their liberty for a false security of health. Yeah. Okay, now, the Jews said here, we want a king so we'll go out and fight our battles. Well, okay, a battle showed up in 1 Samuel 17, Goliath. Did King Saul go fight the battle for him? No. No, he did not. Saul did not fight the battle for the people when his life weighed in the balance. <laughs> no, and that, and that will be the norm. That's the foolishness of giving your responsibility to another. So historically, 1 Samuel reveals a digression from a commonwealth to a monarchy. Practically, 1 Samuel reveals the sins of pride, jealousy, and contention are revealed in governmental agents. When you study Saul and his reaction toward David. Doctrinally, 1 Samuel reveals that Saul portrays the Antichrist, and David portrays the righteous of the tribulation. And David was a fugitive from a tyrant. David also typifies a New Testament believer, but he was not born again, as no one was born again in the Old Testament. So doctrinally, when you run through 1 Samuel, you run through it historically, you can learn some governing principles. When you read through it practically, you can see the problems with the sin of pride, jealousy, and contention. When you look through it doctrinally, you're going to see that Saul portrays the Antichrist and David portrays the righteous of the tribulation. There are some main characters uh, in this uh, book. I'm going to give you five of the main characters in 1 Samuel. Starts off with Hannah, a praying mother. Hannah is one of seven barren women in the Bible who portray Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. So it starts off with Hannah praying at the beginning of um, chapters 1 and 2, and God gives her a child, Samuel, Okay, and she raises that child for God. And then she is given other children. The next main character is Eli the priest in chapter 3 and 4. Eli uh, was a fleshly priest. He was obese. Okay, or as a, the more gentle way, he was weight challenged. Okay, but he uh, yielded to his... Uh, passions uh, for food or whatever, uh, and he had two wicked boys, the, pre the, the PKs, the, the, the priest sons, the priest kids, were evil, were wicked. And it reveals often what happens, uh, the unfortunate events that take place in religious uh, families or religious institutions, colleges, seminaries, uh, churches, whatnot, where uh, fornication is a fornication or scandals, sexual scandals occur, be it uh, Catholic, be it Protestant, be it whatever. Eli the priest reveals that this is unfortunately standard operating procedure. 
The next main character, Samuel, who the book is named after, 1st and 2nd Samuel. Uh, he was the last judge for Israel, a circuit riding judge, and he was also a priest. Uh, he was known for his prayers. In Jeremiah 15, verse 1, uh, God told uh, the Jews through Jeremiah, he, he was telling them, I don't care if Moses or Samuel prayed for you, uh, I'm still not going to hear their prayers. You see, where Moses, his prayer in Exodus 32 saved the lives of over two, almost three million people's lives, the prayers of one man. And Samuel was a faithful priest known for his prayer where he could move God to action. Samuel knew the Lord after he knew the word of the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, in verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. And then in verse 7, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And then when the word of the Lord is revealed unto him, it says, And the, Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, but and did let none of his words fall to the ground. That's in verse 19. So Samuel becomes the last uh, faithful judge and priest of Israel before they make the foolish decision of becoming a monarchy. The first monarch was Saul. The first three kings all ruled for 40 years. Okay, where Saul started off good, you have a Saul in the Old Testament from the tribe of Benjamin who starts off good, ends up bad. Then you have a Saul from the tribe of Benjamin in the New Testament who starts off bad and ends up good. So Saul is a king from chapter 9 through 31 all the way to the end where he commits suicide in chapter 31. He was chosen to be king because of his humility. As I said, he started off good. 1 Samuel 15, verse 17, And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. But Saul was rejected because of his pride. 1 Samuel 15, 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also hath rejected thee from being king. So Saul was rejected for his pride, and he sinned against the Lord, and specifically the word of the Lord. I'm being a little fanatical about the book, but yes. First Samuel 10, or First Chronicles 10, verse 13. So Samuel died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. That's recorded in chapter 15, verse 3, where he did not obey the word all. Now Samuel or Saul was envious of David, and then he had a fake uh, emulation of Samuel. In chapter 15, verse 26, he was a faking or feigning uh, his religious, uh, uh, you know, adoration. And Samuel saw through it. In 1 Samuel 15, 26, he says, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Now, in that uh, closing chapters of 1 Samuel, okay, uh, David becomes uh, the, another character, and he becomes a fugitive where David is uh, introduced in chapter 16, but he becomes a fugitive of the law. He's a shepherd. He's chosen to be the second king. And sometimes the second is better than the first. It's like Cain and Abel. The second was better. 
It's like Ishmael and Isaac, the second was better. It's like Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the second and he was the better. It's like the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is better. It's like your first birth and your second birth. The second birth is better. And the second king of Israel was better than the first king. He was a shepherd. He was a fugitive before he became a king and a future king today living as a fugitive during the end of 1 Samuel. He will get his kingship in 2 Samuel. So that's an overview of 1 Samuel.